Welcome back everybody. Today I thought we would do something a little bit different, a little bit more fun, a little bit uh, interesting. See, I've been sitting on this for the past few weeks. It's a very simple, very easy method to make a, a pretty flexible hex tile grid. And uh, I thought we'd jump into that today. I've gone and made you guys a model. It's uh, just a little hex tile mesh here. He's all properly unwrapped and everything, so you can go and add your own materials and uh, make your own designs and that kind of thing. And I'll leave a link to download this little guy in the description of the video. So uh, let's uh, let's have a little chat here about what exactly it is that we're going to do. So I'm just going to bring in bring in our tile here. So what we're going to do is make a blueprint, which will, uh, when it's spawned, generate for us a hex tile grid of our desired uh, x and y uh, values. In fact, I'll go and put this over here so we can see a bit better. So what's going to happen is we're going to generate uh, hex tiles in an X uh, pattern here. And for each tile in X, we're also going to generate one in in Y. And obviously, if, say if we've made here like a, uh, say a four by four grid, obviously there are some problems if it's like, if it's evenly matched up. For one, we want to have our uh, every second uh, grid line here offset by this much. And we also want to reduce the spacing of each uh, Y tile by a little bit more so everything uh, fits a bit more a bit more neatly so at the end we'll have something that looks a little bit like this uh, generated by blueprint so let's uh delete all of these now right click here in the editor and let's make ourselves a new blueprint just an actor and we'll call it hex grid underscore bp and then we'll open it up so we're not even going to need any components really over here in the in the left what we're going to do is work in the construction script which is a function which is executed uh, before runtime, like when, when the blueprint is built in the in the editor. So we can drag this into the game world here and we can see our hex grid uh, like right here before we hit play. Okay, so the way that we're going to do this is we're going to use a for loop. We're going to use a couple actually, um, not a for each, we want just a for loop. There it is. And this will represent our x uh, grid coordinates. So for our first index, we'll leave it at zero. So we start at you know, the start of the first number, but our last index here will promote to a variable. Uh, we'll call it grid X. And we can set this to whatever we want for now. Uh, we'll just compile, so I can set a default and set this just to something like 10. The next thing is that for each of our tiles in X, uh, like we uh, talked about before, we also want to make a tile in Y. So we'll add ourselves another for loop. And same as before, we'll grab this last index, promote it to a variable, and this will be grid Y. All right, so far so good. The next thing, and really the, the final thing, and all there is to it, is to just come out of this for loop in the loop body and just add a static mesh component. And this is where we actually spawn our uh, static mesh here. So I'll just uh, tear this off and we can drag our mesh directly onto our static mesh component. Cool, and we'll also right click here on this relative transform pin and we'll split it so we get access to all three of these uh, these variables here. And then we just have to do some a little bit of maths here uh, off our uh, for loops so that, you know, we can lay out the tiles, you know, where and how we want to. Because if we just run this right now, it's going to generate uh, X times Y tiles. Uh, speaking of, I'll compile this and set this up to 10 as well. Uh, all on the same spot, all on this relative transform location. So we have to manipulate this uh, for each of our uh, tiles here, which is good because we have this index here. So this, this uh, node is going to fire this for loop. And we can double click it and we can even see exactly what it does here is, uh, but what it does is that it, for each of these indices, everyone between our first and our last index, that being uh, expressed by this uh, pin here, it's going to execute this body. So for every tile in X, it's going to generate as many tiles as we need in Y. I uh, hope that makes sense. So let's, uh, let's do some, let's do some math. So the first thing would be to uh, right click here and we'll get ourselves a select uh, vector. I really like select nodes there. Uh, they can save you a step, save you a branch. And we'll go and uh, split both of these because we're not be working in the Z. We'll just be working in X and Y. So we can leave that at zero. And we also have to apply an offset to different uh, uh, different rows. Speaking of, let's make ourselves some new variables. First one will be spacing X and it will be a float. We'll make another one, call it spacing Y. Uh, also a float, and a third one, uh, offset, which is also a float. And we'll compile it there so we get to set some defaults and drag these guys into the world. So like we talked about at the start of the video, the spacing between uh, the Y rows needs to be a little bit less than spacing in the X so that everything matches up properly and our offset will offset the uh, every 
uh, every even numbered row. Uh, speaking of, let's let's do that now. So the nature of this select vector here is that depending on what we feed into this uh, into this boolean here, it's going to pick either A or B, whether you know the boolean is true or false. So let's come out of our first index here, our first for loop. We'll grab this index and get a modulo node, which you can get by typing in the percent key. And what this does is it multiplies a, a, an integer by an integer and gets you the remainder. So if we divide our number of x rows by uh, 2, we'll get the remainder either of 0 or 1, because if you divide any number by 2, if it's even, there'll be no remainder, and if it's odd, there'll be a remainder of 1. So we come out of this integer here into it equals equals, make sure that it is equals to zero and use the result as the boolean for our select vector. The next thing is to use our index here and we'll go into a multiplier and int multiplied by a float and set, uh, we'll put our spacing x uh, into that so that we're multiplying our spacing by which number is in the row so that the number is always going to increment by the same amount. And we'll set this to something like, uh, if we go 100 actually, we'll go 100 in both just so that we can see how that looks once it's uh, once it's done, and for our offset, uh, we'll go fifty because like a half distance. All right, so let's grab this uh, this multiple here. I'll just duplicate it. Let's plug this into our second for loop, and then our spacing in the y goes into the multiplier, and then we can plug these into our select. So the first one up here goes into our uh, a x and also b x, and our spacing y goes into obviously the y's and the offsets we will add float plus float and add it to the result of our spacing y and then plug it into um no that's not right uh plug it into our y yeah so we're offsetting every second row by a certain amount but the maths for the uh, spacing the x and the y is the same we just plug them into the corresponding x and then the offset y and then the result goes into our static mesh component so we'll compile this hit save, and then come back into our editor and drag this in. And boom, we have a hex grid. So that's all just generated in the construction script. We've got 10 rows of 10 rows. Uh, there are some problems with spacing here. Uh, let's see if we can fix that. Uh, so we, what we wanted, because these are both the same, and as we talked about before, they need to be offset a little bit because the spacing in the uh, vertical rows is going to have to be a little bit less than the spacing in the horizontal rows. So we'll set our spacing in the X to 95. And we'll bump up the spacing in the Y to 110. And our offset here, just up a little bit, 55. So I'll compile and save that, then back in our editor, there we go. How about that? So here we have a nice, nice hex grid that you can make in a very easy way. From here, you can do things, uh, like if we go back to our blueprint here, if you come out of this return value here, uh, we can do things such as set world scale, set world scale 3D, uh, we'll split this and then get a random, uh, hang on, random float, random float in range, uh, one to five, plug this into Z, set these to one, obviously, compile that and save it. And now they've all got, now they've all got a random elevation. So you can, you can do all kinds of funny things uh, like that. I mean, there's, there's plenty that you can do. One other thing as well would be to come out of here and add each one. If we add them to an array and then promote this array to a variable. Oh, let's do a local variable. Sorry, let's click. Uh, just promote it to a regular variable. Uh, call it, say, hex tiles. Then we have this array here that we can call, like when we do other sort of gameplay related stuff in the in the world <laughs> there's a shot of the editor one other thing would be to uh let's say if we uh make a two make vector 2d um yeah this will work yeah so if we come out of our uh for loops here say if part of this chain is to assign a grid location to each of our hex tiles then we can get the indexes like when we spawn the hex tile and that will give us the x and the y um coordinates really of each uh of each oh that was confusing me just there sorry i lost my words it'll get us the x and the y coordinates and we can promote this to a variable as well and set one in each of our hex, of our hex tiles i haven't tested any of this by the way i've kind of uh trailed off here i got uh this far and i thought like so there must be something here there must be something to do but i could never think of it so i'm just i'm just spitballing at this point hope you guys get a kick out of it anyway i'll wrap up there let's have one last look here. So 
this is what a hexile looks like with some, uh, some random scale. Hope you guys had fun. I'll catch you in the next video. If you want to get in touch, the best way is on Discord. There'll be a link in, in the description of the video. Otherwise, uh, check out some of the other links I got down there, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.